You know, when you dive into the world of network security, especially on the open source side, there are two names that just tower over everything else, Snort and Circada. For years, these have been the absolute go-to engines for sniffing out malicious traffic. But the real question is, how did we get here and which one is the right tool for the job today? So first, let's do a super quick refresher. An intrusion detection system, or IDS for short, is basically a digital security guard for your network. Its whole purpose in life is to sit there and watch every single piece of data, every packet that flows in and out. It's constantly looking for anything suspicious that matches a known attack signature or breaks a security rule you've put in place. Now, you'd typically place an IDS at a really critical spot in your network, maybe right behind your main firewall. This gives it the perfect view to inspect all the traffic coming in from the wild internet before it can touch your internal servers and users. Think of it as that guard at the main gate, checking every single ID before letting anyone through. And for the better part of 20 years, the battle to be the world's best open source guard has really been fought between these two giants. you got the old champion, the one who literally wrote the book on this stuff, and then you have the modern challenger, an engine that was built from the ground up for the insane speeds of today's internet. So that leads us to the big question, right? Which one should you actually be running on your network? Well, to figure that out, we're gonna have to dig in. We'll look at their history, their core designs, and most importantly, how they perform when things get really intense. Let's start with the OG, the original, Snort. For a whole generation of security pros, this was the tool that introduced them to intrusion detection. And for a very long time, it was the undisputed king of the hill. I mean, Snort's story is basically the story of open source IDS. It was created way back in 1998 by Martin Roche and pretty much invented the entire category. By the mid-2000s, it was everywhere, the de facto standard. Then, in 2013, the game really changed when the networking behemoth Cisco bought its parent company Sourcefire. That gave Snort a massive corporate backing and pushed it even deeper into big enterprise networks. So why was Snort so dominant? Well, it came down to a few key things. It had this huge, active community, a giant library of well-documented rules, and of course, the full weight of Cisco behind it. Because it had been around for so long, it was considered incredibly stable and reliable. If you needed an IDS, Snort was just the safe, proven bet. But here's the thing, as the years rolled by, network speeds just exploded. We went from megabits to gigabits per second, and a really fundamental crack started to appear in Snort's original design. So what happens when the traffic starts flying in faster than the guard can possibly check it? The problem was something called a single thread bottleneck. See, the original Snort engine could only use one CPU core at a time. I want you to picture a 10 lane superhighway that suddenly, for no reason, squeezes down into a single lane during rush hour. It's chaos, right? It didn't matter how many cores your server had, Snort could only use one. Traffic would jam up, packets would get dropped, and when you drop packets, you're creating blind spots for attackers. This performance problem created a massive opportunity. In a world full of multi-core processors, a new kind of engine was needed. And this, right here, is where our challenger, Suricata, comes into the picture. Suricata showed up in 2010, developed by the Open Information Security Foundation, and it wasn't just another alternative to Snort. It was designed specifically to solve Snort's biggest weakness. It was built from day one for the modern world of high-speed multi-core networking. Suricata's whole design was a direct answer to Snort's limitations. It was built to be multi-threaded so it could use all of your CPU cores and turn that single lane road into a super highway. It also brought in some game-changing features like automatic protocol detection and much richer machine-friendly JSON logs. And here's the kicker, it was fully compatible with Snort's rules, which made it way easier for people to even think about switching. Okay, so we've got the old champion and the new high-performance challenger. Let's put them right next to each other and really compare their core designs and features. This table really says it all, doesn't it? Snort 2 was single-threaded. Suricata is multi-threaded. Snort 2 basically just guessed the protocol based on the port number, while Suricata can automatically identify dozens of different protocols like HTTP or SMB, no matter what port they're running on. Suricata also brought in deep packet inspection and that awesome JSON logging, all while still being able to use Snort's existing rules. So what does that automatic protocol detection really mean in practice? Well, here's a great example. Snort sees traffic on port 80 and just assumes it's web traffic. 
But what if some malware tries to be clever and sends its web traffic over some random weird port like 33549? Snort might completely miss it. Suricata, on the other hand, looks at the actual data inside the packet. It can tell its HTTP traffic, even on a bizarre port, and apply the right security rules. That is a massive advantage. Okay, features are one thing, but how do these two actually hold up when the network is getting absolutely hammered with traffic? Let's put the marketing aside and look at some cold, hard data from a performance test. These charts from a University of Portsmouth study tell a really clear story. On the left, you've got CPU usage, and they're often pretty close. But the chart on the right, that's the headline. It shows packet traps when the system is under a heavy load. You can see Suricata just hums along, dropping almost nothing. Snort 2, because of that single-threaded design, just starts to choke and drops a shocking number of packets. That's a huge blind spot for any security team. But hold on. Let's add some important real-world context here. This quote from an expert on the NetGate forums makes a fantastic point. For your average home network or even a small business that isn't pushing a totally saturated gigabit rank all day long, are you really going to notice that performance difference? Hmm, maybe not. The advantage really comes into play in those super high throughput environments. Now, just when you thought Suricata was the clear performance winner, the story takes a twist. Cisco did not take this challenge lying down. They went back to the drawing board and completely rewrote Snort from the ground up. And in 2021, they launched Snort 3, a brand new modern engine designed to compete head to head. And what was the number one new feature in Snort 3? Yep, you guessed it, multi-threading. This chart shows you just how big of a deal that was. While Snort 2 was dropping a ton of packets, Snort 3 brings that number way, way down, putting it right back in the same ballpark as Suricata. Just like that, the performance gap was pretty much closed. And that brings us to today. We now have two incredibly powerful, multi-threaded, open-source IDS engines. The question isn't just which one is faster anymore. Now it's about which one is the right fit for your network, your team, and your goals. So let's break it down into some simple use cases. You'd probably want to stick with Snort if you value the rock-solid stability of a tool that's been battle-tested for decades. Or maybe your company is heavily invested in Cisco security gear. Snort will fit right in. Also, if you're on hardware with limited memory, Snort 3 can be a bit more efficient. On the other side, you're going to want to choose Suricata if you need to squeeze every last drop of performance out of a high-speed network. Or if you really need those advanced features like protocol detection and the detailed JSON logging for your analytics tools. And finally, if you just want to be on an engine with a super active, community-driven development cycle, Suricata is a great bet. And what about the price tag? Well, this is the best part. The core software for both Snort and Suricata is completely free and open source. So are the most popular community rule sets. The costs only really start to appear when you get into enterprise level stuff. You might pay for a commercial rule subscription to get threat intelligence faster, or maybe for an enterprise support contract. And of course, you always have to think about the cost of the hardware you'll need to run it all. The main takeaway here is that we are in a great position with two fantastic, high-performance open-source options. The competition that Circata sparked has made both projects so much better. And that just leaves us with one final thought. As our networks get even faster and the threats get even smarter, will one of these titans finally pull away for good? Or will this rivalry just keep pushing network security to new heights for years to come? It's a fight that, in the end, we all win. Thanks for tuning in to this explainer.